good day. I'm very nervous, I apologize. Right from the start, it's my first presentation I actually have slides for, so I'm, I hope to share a lot of uh, very practical things with you. Uh, and um, uh, so my name is Olga Dachina, and um, I'm not a teacher. I'm in the mom's capacity at this forum. And also, mm, when I started uh, speaking English uh, with my daughter, when I started thinking about it, I realized that there is a, a lot of information about um, early education on the internet, but it's kind of scattered everywhere in different Instagram contacted blogs. And when you actually need some resources on a certain topic or you need to find something quickly, it's quite difficult uh, to do. So I actually decided to organize it somehow logically. So that's a project I'm uh, working on right now, My English Kit. It's a portal where I try to provide all these practical uh, tips and materials in a logical and structured way. And I'm going to refer to it quite a lot, but I hope that's what I'm doing actually uh, for all of us uh, bilingual moms or mom who's just uh, trying to provide good resources, not necessarily raise a bilingual kid, but provide some materials for additional activities um, at home for kids who are learning Russian, uh, who are learning English. Uh, so I also, while working on this project, I kind of um, look around a lot and I talk to a lot of people and um, I'm like a... I don't know, researcher about this topic. So I definitely noticed there are some strange and very interesting things happening. Uh, so this idea of early, early, uh, child, uh, early um, English acquisition for children uh, is extremely popular right now. And I decided to ask a question, why is this happening? And I think there are two very interesting phenomena which probably contributed to that. So first of all, two years ago on the Russian TV, on the Ru Russia channel, there was this show about talented children, and there was this girl, Bella Devyatkina, who was just four at the time, probably everyone knows about her. Uh, she spoke seven languages, and she spoke uh, French, uh, English, German, Chinese, Arabic, and some other exotic language, uh, Spani uh, Spanish fluently. And it turned out that her mother simply invites uh, native speakers of those languages and she spends uh, several hours um, in every language just playing. So she was four and she showed great results. And I think a lot of people decided to follow her example and it's kind of created this boom. And at the same time there is this program uh, developed by a teacher from Samara, Maria Elisieva. She created the turnkey solution for parents, my English baby course, you buy it and you have a set of videos, set of texts and set of games for every day. Very easy, you just follow it and uh, um, a lot of children show great results. I heard a lot of positive reviews. It's possible to do even if you are not advanced. And uh, she has 327,000 followers on Instagram. She has her own community. She shares tips, and it's also created this buzz around early English, I think. Uh, so have you heard this term uh, Ray doesn't like? Angla Mama. Can you raise your hand uh, if you know what Angla Mama is? Not so many people. So Angla Mams, Angla Mams, Angla Dads, Angla Parents, that's um, this term. Um, so I think I'm Angla Mom, although I don't like this term very much uh, myself. So if it's a purely Russian family, but you raise a child in a second language, artificially, so to speak, um, you become an Angla Mom. Um, on my website, I collect uh, information about families who speak English at home so that other people could find neighbors and possibly have uh, meetings together and uh, do something, find fr English friends. and. Right now, I'm not promoting it very much, but we already now have uh, 190 families. So you just, it, it, they started have collecting this only half a year ago. So we, you, you can imagine this, this phenomenon is very big. And uh, there are more than 50 accounts on Instagram which uh, have the word Angla Mama in them. Um, what is going on? So definitely there is a very big trend. And it looks like I fell for it as well. I didn't think about raising a bilingual child uh, from birth. I'm interpreter, so I speak English. Uh, but this idea never came to my mind. But when Sasha was, my daughter was uh, one and four years old, I met this girl. Uh, I had a conversation club for parents. 
uh, but you could come with kids. And uh, this girl, Alona, she came to the club and she was not a teacher, she was not an interpreter like me, she, her work was not connected with English, but she was speaking English to her child naturally, and it worked well, and it seemed natural, and the daughter was okay with that, and I thought, wow, that's interesting, that's cool, why not follow her example? And it gradually started, so when Sasha was one and six, I bought some English books, we started listening to some nursery rhymes, uh, we went to a family English club, so I kind of was doing it. I started reading about raising bilingual. I met Maria Bilivan, so I know I was doing it gradually, but it didn't work the way I wanted because officially, according to uh, some research, to raise a bilingual kid in this, ter in this meaning that both languages are more or less at the same level, you need to have 30% of uh, exposure of, of a kid's waking time sp should be spent in this language. And I didn't have as, as much because I've had a lot of psychological barriers. Um, first of all, uh, perfectionism, as Ma Maria said. Mm. I didn't know how these small things, kitchen utensils or parts of the toys are called. Some things in the playground, I just didn't know how they're called. And I'm not very good at researching in Google and it takes a lot of time. Uh, then it didn't sound very natural. So I like this idea, but still, like, like you were asking, um, we live in Russia, my husband in Russia is Russian, and some other problems, uh, they were quite difficult. So then I decided to, that for me, the mom, which is not very, very organized, one parent, one language approach would work best. So if it's myself speaking only English, then it's kind of, clear, I don't need to s jump from one language to the second one all the time, and then the child will get more exposure. She goes to the Russian kindergarten since last year, so we don't spend the whole day together, so to have more exposure, I just need to be strict. And uh, when Sasha was two and nine, I switched to one parent, one language. Uh, to do that, I organized the chat where we write reports to each other with other uh, parents saying, did we succeed today? If we didn't succeed speaking only English, we were paying fines um, to charity later on and like trying to understand psychologically what was the problem. Expl I was explaining to myself why I switched, what was the problem today, what was the problem yesterday, what was the problem the parents, um, um, the parents of my husband or some people on the ground or in the playground who looked strangely or I, I didn't need, a, uh, I, I missed some word. Uh, and, and it worked, so I switched to a poll uh, when, uh, but Sasha was uh, answering in, in, in Russian. Uh, but when we went on holiday in May abroad and asked my, my husband to help me and for two or three days also speak English with her, it, it, did ma it, uh, it was a magical result because Sasha was surrounded by English and so she started uh, answering in English and it worked and I was, I was amazed how, how much she actually knows and she started speaking. So right now she's three and five, she's switching between two languages and she can <laughs> construct more difficult sentences, ask questions, she can reason in English. And um, I was going to show you a video, but um, it was not ready by tomorrow, but my, on my Facebook uh, page you can see some examples. They're not very perfect, but, um, uh, but she does speak English. Of course I have a lot of much, much, much more to do, but um, I would say that for now she is bilingual. And I'll share some resources which helped me and which can help you if you want to follow my example. I'm talking only about uh, raising a bilingual kid when you speak to a child. Of course, there are many other ways, but I'll stick to this one. The first great resource you need is time, of course. Uh, time to think it through, to understand why you're doing it, to so maybe read some some supportive books about that. Uh, then time to prepare some things which will help you to create English environment at home because it's, it may seem easy, you just speak to a child, you just con c comment on all the actions uh, you are doing in English, but it's not enough. Uh, you need to have books, you need to have some songs, you need to have some maybe glossaries, additional materials which will help you to speak better baby and toddler English. And of course you need this 30% of waking time of a child in English, so you need to really be into this project and um, have the time available for, for doing that, of course. Second psychological report uh, resource, which is very important, I think it's, uh, it's uh, second resource, it's psychological support. 
And as far as I know, Ray, for example, he managed uh, by himself, but uh, I needed some help from other, he's a man, and uh, women like, like talking to women, and so I found some great support from other moms. And um, so I recommend you some, uh, here are some chats and groups where you can, so first one, the first two ones, you pay for the membership, and there are some other people, uh, moderators, which can answer your questions, which can provide uh, uh, supportive materials. Yes, a lot of people are skeptical about them, but uh, materials are great, and those which I recommend, I think that people who work there, they, are, uh, they know what they're doing, and they provide... Uh, uh, great, great advice. And there is a great uh, chat in Telegram with 400 parents and teachers with wonderful uh, resources and links and, and advice they share. There are numerous of Instagram marathon you can follow if you just want to, because for me it was very important to get into this routine. So when I switched into this one parent, one language uh, method, it was like, yes, I know what I'm doing. I'm consistent, yes, like Maria was saying, consistency is very important. So a marathon is something like you're doing small thing every day and you get into this routine. That that's can help. Uh, then there is my Facebook group, Raditelem Bangliskom DTT. A lot of parents uh, who do this <laughs> ask questions and get support there. Great English speaking resource, Facebook group, uh, Raising Bilingual and Multilingual Children. There you can read stories about um, families from all over the world. For example, like mom speaks Arabic, dad speaks Norwegian. Uh, they live in France and their child goes to English school. So that's, that's a hell. It's much more difficult than what we are doing here in Russia. And they uh, share their stories and they uh, explain how they are doing it and what a pos possible approach to, to, um, to such situations. And also I collected some best blogs of Russian bilingual parents and some interviews with them. Uh, you can find find the link here. Uh, we are transferring our website to the new platform, so this link may not work. If you type old, O-L-D dot, my English kid, it, it will work. For, for the next seven days, I think, it will work through old. Uh, this small beginning. Uh, s next thing, okay, you're speaking at home. That's great, but it's not enough. As I've said, I think you need to create this whole atmosphere, um, authentic English environment at home, books, cartoons, films, audio. And here are some of my recommendations. Uh, buying English books, quite expensive in Moscow. Best, uh, two, two best bookshops, Reload and Bookbridge are great huge variety, but quite expensive. Uh, so I recommend uh, finding, contacting Instagram small groups who uh, they export uh, from abroad and they have very good prices. So on this uh, link you can find an article, the whole article on where to buy English books with specific examples of shops you can go to. And uh, some recommendations how to order, for example, from book people and some other British uh, stores which sell books in sets. So the price per book becomes very, very cheap. Uh, also in this uh, section on my website, uh, some lists of uh, best books uh, for those who are starting, some uh, reviews of a series of books and so on. Next thing, cartoons and films. If you are just only starting, I recommend uh, YouTube uh, channel Super Simple Songs, Wow English TV, Mother Goose Club. If the child is old, old uh, a lot of parents subscribe to Netflix, a lot of authentic uh, educational programs and films, and uh, some recommendations on cartoons as well here. If the child is very, very small and screen time is not recommended, you can start with audio. A uh, great resource, storynori.com, with free downloadable stories. And uh, check out Vkontakte as well, for sure. Audio files in Vkontakte, that's real treasure. You'll find anything, just need to know how, how to search. Uh, as well as uh, books in PDF and contact, of course I'm not supposed to say this, uh, but you can find any, any book there. So that's your resource. And um, applications for the on the telephone, uh, Audible or Script, which is much cheaper and also has a lot of in English books, just 700 rubles per month, and you'll have all the children's literature in your, in your smartphone. Um, next thing, if you've done it at home, maybe you are brave enough to venture outside your home and you want to uh, show your kid that there is some life outside. 
um, speaking to mom. Uh, Moscow is, I'm, I'm from St. Petersburg, but I'm quite happy that I moved to Moscow because you can find so many things here. Uh, so first of all, of course, I recommend finding uh, some family who probably uh, lives next to you and with whom you can organize play dates and children become friends. And of course, it's very, it's, I know from experience, very difficult to make two Russian uh, children when they meet speaking English, even if they speak English with their parents. But like I know when they go to Maria's club and uh, they are together, they met there, so they are participate in some English activities, then when they meet, they, the, their language of communication is English. Um, then a uh, good idea is to find maybe some expat families, visit lingu uh, language theaters. Now there are three of them. Just uh, some time ago there was only flying bananas, but now there is more. And we have a fish on the website where we have information about different guided tours and organize uh, English family picnics. Um, some resources for kids who already go to school. So we were, we were brainstorming the list of possible things you can do when your child grows, but English lessons at school are too boring for him, of course. So in Moscow there are opportunities, although it's still not enough, and we need to keep brainstorming about this. And the last thing, um, what I recommend you to do if you decide to go down this road is to create a bilingual action plan. Uh, that's an idea proposed by uh, Naomi Steiner in her great book, Seven Sta Steps to Raising a Bilingual Child. It's available in Russian as well. Um, she recommends to set out some specific resources and activities you're going to implement. For example, for the coming six months, uh, you need to spend some time to prepare answers to all these questions. What are you going to do and what materials you have at hand? And then if you, you've done this work, then even if you are in doubt, even when you are tired, you already have these books, you already have this, I don't know, something planned, some activities where you go, you are, they're planned, and it will be much more difficult to, to say, no, I'm tired, <laughs> I, give, I give up. So that's a great result. And uh, basically, that's it. Of course, I have a lot more to share, but probably, I, I never realized that I have a lot of information, I need to um, speak at some other forum as well. You said that she's going to speak English at the age of one year and six months, so one and six, we just started reading some books and listening to songs. So that's uh, environment we started to create. But uh, she started speaking when in English when she was three and one. No, no, no. And Russian when she was two and four. Um, my name is Marina. <laughs> I just wanted to share that I started talking to my son when he was five months old. And um, it was a struggle for me, um, and, uh, but I just went, decided to go down the journey. And to my surprise, well, I wanted to give up like 107 times because it was very weird, like talking to a child every single day, just one way, one way, no feedback, no feedback. And then I just like, okay, I just give myself a few more months and then I'm done. But it just happened one day, one day when he was two years and two months, I think. And it was like, boom, like one day he would just say, mommy, give me yad block, give me yellow block, because we, uh, he liked um, building a tower with blocks. And it was like, oh my God, <laughs> I was jumping. My, my husband, he was like, are you crazy? I was like, no, I'm not, because I just put so much effort into just what happened right now. And like, since then, and he started English. It was his language, it was his first language. He started speaking in English first. Our grannies, they were shocked. They were like, okay, what are we gonna do now? <laughs> are you going to translate? I said, no, I'm not going to. You just talk, you just talk to him the way you've been talking and he will reply to you one day. And yeah, and then he just started like mm, separating the languages, switching between the languages. And right now it's the other, the other way around. His Russian is way better than English, of course, because he attends um, Russian kindergarten, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, this is the way it is. It's to my surprise, his first language was English. He started speaking in English first. <laughs> so yeah. 
Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> I really like the way you answered the grannies. Keep talking to him and one day he might reply to you. <laughs> yes. So bilingualism, yeah, uh, as a way to treat family issues, yeah. I don't have questions, but I just want to say thank you, Olga, for this project, because I saw when she started this project and she support me every day in my way also, and it's really good idea, was a really good idea to start, and it's really, yes, mom's English at first, and uh, now I see this journey, and I see this presentation, and I need this presentation, <laughs> and uh, thank you very much for your support and for everything. Yes, I am a mother with uh, almost 10 years experience of uh, raising a bilingual child and I don't speak English with my daughter <laughs> and uh, um, I will participate in later in a discussion but uh, I really want to thank Olga for all collecting all these resources for English language environment, these books cartoons and different programs because this is very important. This is what can really make a difference. <clears throat> because for me speaking my daughter English was unnatural. And I was reading books every day. We were watching cartoons. We were listening to the stories really a lot. I arranged a communication in a different way because I was disabled to make lessons with a native speaker, but it was just three, day, three days per week. So all the time it was an English language environment, kind of artificial one. Yes, we say it artificial because it's not real communication, but it really helps a lot. So thank you very much for what you're doing. Thank you. Any more questions or comments? Yes. One Can I ask a question? It's not a comment. <laughs> okay. Um, the question would be: uh, How do you feel about you know the emotional you know state when you speak with your kid, or maybe the transition, like how you felt when you started speaking English and the emotional connection through the language to your kid, and how you. You, how the feeling evolved? Um, maybe I didn't have this problem with emotions too much because I stayed quite late and I had a lot of cuddle time and I said a lot of tender things in, in Russian already. So it was like I felt like it's, it's a project and it can benefit my child a lot and it's great. And I felt inside myself very big motivation uh, to do that. And um, uh, still sometimes. Yeah, I, I'm not 100% uh, Opal right now, and I do sing Russian lullabies, and uh, we do still some um, conversations in Russian, so I don't uh, have a big problem with expressing my emotions in general. And um, yeah, I can, I, I remember I wanted to say it, and I didn't, I didn't have uh, opportunity to say it before. I felt very good motivation because First of all, I realized that I had this problem in my profession with, with my English. I needed to advance somehow. I needed to work, I still do. I wanted to work on my English and I realized that this is a great opportunity to do, expand my vocabulary, just to read more authentic books. And I enjoy it a lot. So in general, for me, it's very beneficial for me as well. And uh, that's why I believe it in it. And uh, when I have some, yeah, maybe concerns about not being able to express all the nuances of emotions, I still uh, have a very big goal and it doesn't stop me. You know, also I have a question about the pointing. Uh, so do you point, for, th for example, if you are playing with your uh, daughter, so do you point, this one is yellow, just focus on her, uh, you know, because for example, when you're talking, I mean, a small one, yes? I mean, uh, about small one. But, and when you're talking about, for example, shapes and colors, you just point this one yellow, this one pink, and so on and so on. Do you point, or it's like natural speak, uh, the same like Russian, without pointing, without anything? And the, the, the second question about, uh, sorry, about uh, third language. 
about French language or other language. What do you think about this one? Um, about naming things um, somehow expressly. I'm not a teacher and I realized I, I did CELTA in July because I felt that I need to be more like a teacher in this process, but <laughs> um, I'm still, I'm, I'm for the more natural conversations and this Opal works for me very well because I tried, I did try to use all the scripts and like games, I pushed myself so much, but it doesn't work for me. I'm not very creative, so I can't prepare a lot of craft materials and then um, use specific expressions for learning something. It didn't work for me. For me, it works just to live in, in, in this language. And the second language, yeah, after I saw great results, I felt, oh, that's amazing. Kids are like sponges, really. You need to... And I also want to work on my French, my second language, and uh, I decided that we'll go to the French kindergarten or French school named after Alexandre Dumas, but maybe a little bit later. So I, I want to use this experience, but here I'm also a lazy mom. I just want to send her to school so that she acquires this language there. And, but still I want to support it because I want to communicate with teachers, with other parents, and I want to read books with her, so I want to use it as my benefit as well, but I don't want to, to, to do it myself. We are short of time, yes, it's coffee time, coffee time.